But back then it was real nice. Tell me the things I'm seeing can't be for real. And this can't be the things I get. People back then used to get along. It used to be love and still money. The corruption of our youth, corruption of their beautiful minds. These rhymes is lines on stone. There is one throne, call me Pharaoh. Next voice and be then arrow. Cause the same people who gave you and exposure. They'll tell your life like they know you, then call it history. Facts become mystery. Tell me why couldn't you take it away from home and give a little respect? That's all any man want to get. But oh baby, just for the thrill, you made a nightmare, you made it so real. Tell me, baby, how could you hurt me? My name is Kenya Herring, but I go by Ken. And right now I'm doing a movement. You can call it a black conscious movement. Um, it got a social enterprise to it. You know, so, it, you know, I broke it down into... Um, multiple components but right now uh we have my street light publishing uh company and with that we do film literature and music and right now we're on the verge of being the fastest growing publishing uh company in, in the southern region uh, we're working on documentaries right now uh, we're doing sponsoring community events we're doing festivals um, so we're trying to be, um, you know, branched out, but it all goes back to being a social enterprise where we're not about trying to make the, uh, the most profit, you know, we, we're not seeking to become rich. We're trying to, um, just fund our social enterprise and our endeavors, endeavors. So, um, so that's what we're doing. And the main thing we started out with is books you know uh we wanted to see something that we can produce be in control of the uh, production so we started with books and the uh second book the main book we're pushing right now and promoting right now is the determination of a nation within a nation the uh, subtitle is the uh, 49th law of power and that's usually the uh format of the forum that we'd be pushing in our promotion, the 49th Law of Power. And to summarize the uh, book, it just entails, it, it, it shows um, what's, what's going to happen entails when Blacks, you know, uh, come together on a uh, conscious level and also on a um, more structured uh, organizational level. So uh, once that happens, you're going to see power you know that's already there just hasn't been tapped into so uh once that comes forth you're gonna see what i call the four and law of power you know so um we build the networks you know we got a lot of a lot of things in the fold you know uh we're headed to uh, africa in the near future we're trying to uh take the same format we're doing here over to uh, africa we're gonna start with ghana um, so we got a few things over there. So we don't build a network in Ghana and throughout the uh, Southern region, throughout the United States. So, uh, we're doing a lot of things, but right now, uh, we're focusing on touching the uh, community. We're trying to build a community up and we're doing that by way of these festivals. Um, uh, we also, we're going to different communities. We're recognizing, uh, community leaders, uh, activists people who have been doing the work in the community on a consistent basis. So we recognize those individuals. Um, we have an award that we 
um, sponsor is called the Recognition and Respect Award. And we recognize individuals in, in the community. And what that comes from or stems from the fact that as a whole, as a people, we're not recognized and respected. You know, so we're trying to uh, tap into that, you know, so we can contribute, you know, to trying to raise standard of living, you know, a standard of consciousness and uh, just tap, tap into, you know, you will say it's also on a spiritual level, you know, conscious level, spiritual level, economic level, you know, different levels, you know, everything's uh, got to be done on multiple, multiple fronts, you know, but the uh, number one thing, we can't be complacent, you know, and so we're just trying to build, you're trying to network, you know, it's all about growth and development. So we're just trying to tap into different uh, areas where we can, um, you know, just work toward a common goal and that growth and development. Now, I was born in Jasper, Florida. That's Hamilton County. If you look on the map, that's on the borderline of Florida and Georgia. You got Jasper. Now, I wasn't born in no hospital. I was born right in the projects. So I ain't from the projects. I was born right in the projects. By what you call a hands made or uh, I forgot the term you be calling them. But yeah, I was born in the projects of Jasper. So um, my family, you know, Jasper's so small, I got family on both sides of the track. My dad and my mom, uh, family is on opposite sides of the track. On the right, side I got my dad on the left I got my mom now like I said you know my family on both sides of the railroad track you know I got my dad's side the heron side so this is like the heron estates right here you know my, my granddaddy had his house right here you know it's torn down now this is my aunt my aunt stay right here right now with all my aunties stay out here my cousin so anytime you know I come to Jasper I got to touch both sides of Jasper you know so uh, I'll come on out. You know, we're sitting on about a couple of acres. I say about three, maybe four acres out here. Uh, but yeah, so this is where everybody come on out, have a powwow, get together. You know, been out here for at least about 40, 50, 50 years probably. Yeah, so, you know, this family, you know. It's home, so whenever we come to Jasper, we got to touch down, touch on, see all, see all our kin folks, all my loved ones. So we all come from all over, and we'll meet up right here, right here at the Heron Estates. All right, so I stayed with mom. Um, God bless her heart. You know, she died of uh, breast cancer, but um, I stayed with my mom until. I was about six or seven. Then I went to go stay with my my aunties, uh, <clears throat> Auntie George, Auntie Trish, mainly uh, raised me. Um, but yeah, you let them tell it. You know, I wasn't the, I wasn't an angel. You know, you know, growing up. But uh, but yeah, so I stayed with my aunties and until I became a teenager, I went to go stay with my dad, and that's how I get to Gainesville. I'm Patricia Herring. I'm the auntie of Ken Herring. Um, we're here in, in Jasper, Florida, uh, where Ken was born and raised. Um, he come from a large family, grandfather, grandmother, lots of aunts, lots of aunties, cousins. He have uh, lots of siblings, five. I think there's five of them, and uh, lots of love. You know, we Ken came into our lives um, when he was around seven, eight years old, second grade. Um, he became a part of our family permanently uh, until he moved in with his father. But he was a loving child. And he needed lots of love, so we gave him lots of love. Um, 
some good love and some tough love is what he received from his aunties. And he got a lot of Christian growing up, Christian education. He attended church faithfully with us. And a lot of times he would go to sleep and we forget about him. And uh, they'd say, hey, who little boy is this back here sleeping? Because we were not used to having kids with us. And we'd be the left kid in church on the bench sleep. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Good. <ahead. laughs> Hi. My name is Joyce Heron. I am the sixth child of Reverend and Miss Sarah Heron. Reverend John. John and Sarah Heron. They had 13 children. We were reared up in a nice home. We were brought up to support one another. If this one didn't have, the other one had. And we all looked out for one another. But I was asked to take care of my nephew, Kendrick Heron. Kenya. Yeah. are always open to lend a helping hand where and show love where I can. Mm -hmm. And I was more than glad to be a part. And I was more than glad to be a part of Ken life. Ken, you know, I'm very proud of him from where he came from. It took a lot of discipline with him, but he took it with love. And right now, I see it paying off. So I really hated to see Ken when he left Jasper because I feel as though he had great things coming for him. Ken was very smart, very smart in school, he done his best. I didn't have to tell him about getting his homework. He just was very, very smart child. And that still is a part of him right now. And, and I, Ken is just like one of my mom's children. They all love him just like he was not a grandchild, but a child, but they child. So, it just really make me feel good to see where Ken has come from and where Ken is going. But, uh, but yeah, so got a big family, you know, a lot of aunties, you know, I got my uncle, but yeah, so my auntie, uh, Joyce, auntie Trish raised me on my dad's side and, you know, coming back, you know, I visit both sides, but Something that stick with me right before I graduated high school, I came back to work. I came back to Jasper. I was telling myself I'm, I'm gonna stay in Jasper, you know, before I graduate high school. So in Jasper, you know, you got a job at Gold Kiss. You know, you're doing pretty good. You, you know, if you're looking on a uh, eight mile with M and M, you, you know, you're working in a car plant, you know, Ford plant. In Jasper, Hamilton County, you got a chicken plant, right? So during high school, you know, me and my auntie, uh, my auntie Bet, you know, she's my ride, you know, to uh, Gold Kiss. Now they call it Pilgrim, you know, with Gold Kiss back in the day. You know, when I came back to Jasper, you know, everybody was saying, but Ken got him a good job, but Ken and Gold Kiss, you know, that was like, you know, the big thing in Jasper. But I realized, man, I was at the bottom of the bottom, right? I was getting live chickens off the truck, right? Hanging them up. I'm standing on a pile of dead chicken. I'm hanging them up. You know, I'm like, man, how the, oh, excuse my language. I'm like, man, how folks think this is it? You know, I'm looking around. Then I realized, you know, everybody in different sections of the plant. You know, my cousin, she over there, you know, when you go to the grocery store and you see the chicken at the end product, you know, they the one wrapping it up. You know, they send the end product. I realized I'm at the bottom. I'm hanging up live chicken. So, man, I was doing that for a few hours and I heard like a bell go off. Shit, sound like a Fred Flintstone bell. I'm like, eh, that's why I pull the bird. I'm like, what's this? They telling me, man, we on break. 
I'm like, oh, I said, man, it's straight. Straight from the Flintstones. So, man, we go on the break room. I'm talking about, man, like a hundred. It's all black folks, but like a hundred folks in the break room. And uh, the bell rung, and it went off again. Everybody like like robots, like bots. I'm looking around. It's my first day. I'm looking around. I'm like, what's going on? They say, hey, break over with. I'm like, all oh, ready? So everybody leaving. I'm like, man. I said, I'm done. My, aunt, my auntie come out, my auntie back. I said, Ken? She was like, uh, you know, we got to get back out there. I said, man, I ain't doing it. I said, I'm done. I said, uh, but she was like, she was like, well, you know, we got four hours left until I leave. You know, you gonna sit in the break room? I said, man, I would be right here. I'm done. But that let me know, you know, you got to realize, you know, when you at the bottom, you know, you got to realize where you at, but you don't got to stay there. So I always say, you know, you can always get from where you at. My name is Betty Burgess. I'm Ken Auntie. I've been in Jasper ever since 1967. I come from Jennings, Florida. Uh, Ken, he was born in the project. Man, these exact projects right here. I was born inside these projects. And this is my whole this is my whole stumping ground right here. This is where everything went down at. You know, so the main thing I take from Jasper, uh I guess before I graduated high school, you know, if you look at eight mile with M and M, you know, he working in a uh a car factory, you know, but in, in Jasper we didn't have no car factory like in Detroit, we had a chicken factory, a chicken coop. You know, so I started out first job working in Gold Kiss. So I worked that job 15 minutes, you know, and, but I realized in Jasper, you working at Gold Kiss, you got you a, a double wide trailer, you're doing pretty good. So when I first started working at Gold Kiss, it taught me something. You know, I was at the bottom of the deck, you know, um, it showed me, you know, you got to realize where you at in life, where you at in your position. So I realized I was at the bottom, it, and it taught me that when you're at the bottom, you don't have to stay at the bottom. You know, I was at the factory when they first brought the chickens in. I was the one hanging the chickens up, you know, taking them into the uh, the factory. So uh, I was saying the bottom, I said, man, I got to get up out of here. So uh, that showed me, you know, the beginning that you could change your your environment and your scenario, but you got to work hard and you got to be aware, you know, of where you at. You got to, got to have a goal. So, so Jasper was influential, influential to me because it showed me, you know, I got to always look at where I'm at and determine where I'm going, you know, and, and go about the uh, the means of doing that. But I can't, you know, you can't stay at, at the bottom of one place, you know. So I always had that in me. You know, that, that driven me no matter where I found myself. I, I assess the situation, see where I'm at, you know, and see how I can, you know, take the situation better the way I'm at. And so that's always, you know, in me and that keep me driven. But, um, yeah, that's the main thing, what I want to say about, you know, this area, you know, my hometown where I was raised and grew up. You know, it's still pretty quiet. You know, still got a lot of loving people here and everything. And, uh... Yeah, so, you know, we're going to keep it going. Yeah, we're going to keep it going. You know, I'm good. Yeah. But back then, it was real nice. And people back then used to get along. It used to be love and still money. Now it's just, if you ain't got the money to pay them, they don't want to do nothing for you. So... I hope we can get back to the good days where people did stuff out of love instead of money. Well, Cam was my nephew when he was a little boy. He was, he became a man now, but when he was little, he locked his uncle, <laughs> he locked his stepfather out of a truck. One time he came in for lunch and he was knocking on the truck. Ken, Ken, open the truck. And Ken was laughing like it was funny. He didn't think about his daddy had to go out there and make money, his stepdad. 
had to go out there and make money. And other than that, he was a he was good. But when he went out to go kiss, I'm glad he did because that made him go into the army to me. Because I think he the only one out to go kiss with about 15 minutes. <laughs> so the can then and the can now, his mom would have loved him to death. Uh, you know, from the concrete, you know, from the mud, you know, man, it ain't really too much going on in Jasper, you know, but, you know, it's gonna make, it's gonna build your character, it's gonna make you who you is, you know, it's gonna give you your foundation to go out into the world, you know, and, and know how to interact, you know, cause you, you, you gotta grind if you wanna get it, you know, it, 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 either sink or swim, Jasper gonna let you know it's sink or swim, you know, it's gonna let you know it's a, dog eat dog world you know but yeah so you know it's good to have that strong you know that family and that bond and that community which is you know it's breaking down now you know community and society is changing you know as a whole but uh but yeah so we trying to do our part you know on an individual level we're trying to do my part you know on a bigger level but but that's what it all came down to man when i was you know looking at everything you know i you know on the outside, you know, the world, they'll consider me, you know, I gotta claim it. They'll consider me, you know, a successful type. But uh, I started looking on a bigger picture, you know, on a national level and on a global level. Black folks, we're not recognized and respected, right? So then I started looking at it on the individual level. Really, the black man, the black woman just wanna be recognized and respected. So, you know, that was a, um, you know, main point, you know, in this movement. You know, first we had to change the mindset, we you know, then we got to come together. But we've been trying to do that forever. Everybody got all the questions, but no answers. So what we doing, we putting everything in a proactive manner. You know, we about to, you know, we don't came up with a formula. You know, we put everything in the book. Cause, you know, like, like I said, we don't have no, no playbook. They didn't give us the plays when we came you know, came out here into, into the world, you know, into the game, into society. So we just making up as we go. So after we got all the jewels that, you know, that we can collect, you know, we got a little knowledge and experience, you know, so, you know, we put all that, you know, into a, uh, a formula and we out here trying to implement it. So when you see street light publishing out here, you, you know, you see me out here in the, in the community, you know, with my network and my team. You know, we ain't out here trying to compete with nobody. You know, we ain't trying to take nobody's shine. We, we are trying to make our contributions. We about to be going through our community, you know, doing the same thing. That's trying to build, you know, and trying to change, you know, the mindset, perspective, you know, what, what's been going on, because what's been happening ain't been working. So, so we about to come with some new plays, some new initiatives, and we just hope everybody just, you know, even if you ain't gonna try to join the movement, we hope that you don't try to, you know, uh, hinder, you know, slander what we're doing. You know, that's the main thing, cause the formula gonna work. You know, you put the input in, we, we, we guaranteed to get the output. So, uh, yeah, so we're keeping our eye on, you know, all pieces the formula trying to make sure you know everything move you know in a nice little pace because as a people you know we don't trust the process you know and what we're doing is a process so we've been doing this for a long time this ain't overnight you know some of y'all might just be coming you know to grips you know coming across what we're doing but we've been doing this you know for over a decade so yeah so we know it's a process you know, we're gonna keep going, like I said, community to community. We know it's hard to change mindsets, hard to change viewpoints, but we're gonna keep going at it. Hopefully y'all will come across the uh, book, For the Ninth Law of Power, and that gonna be the, the starting point of what we're doing. Some people are already on it, some gonna get on it, you know. So, uh, but yeah, so what we're doing is, like I said, opportunity and resources, we're trying to bring that. You know, it's all about trying to, get opportunity you know make a change in your life you know you want to change your, your standard of living because it's only going to get worse you know we got to come up with some, with some new plays so you know we're just going to contribute our part and, and, and 
that's it. You know. Thank y'all for being a part of the movie. You know, part of my background. You know, I don't been part of all kind of organizations. You know, uh, institutions, organizations. You know, and they, they're just doing the same old, same old. So you know, I started seeking my own knowledge, doing a lot of reading. Nowadays, I mean, you got so much knowledge in your hand, you can't even say something impossible now, man. You can find out all kind of info. So, man, that's the thing I knew. You know, I was just doing just about 10 years of just researching. I had so much knowledge, man. I like, man, I couldn't even leave the world with all this knowledge. Yeah, and I was like, and I actually, you know, I started, I was in school, grad school. I was about to do my dissertation. I was like, man, I ain't about to, you know, I ain't about to uh, give this to the educational institution. So I took all my knowledge and my research, and I ended up putting it into this book to give it to my people firsthand. Because I already knew once it got into the institutional realm, it was going to get to get hidden. And then three years later, now they're talking about all this woke stuff. So, you know, uh, if you look at just knowledge, you know, they're trying to keep from us, information they're trying to keep from us, you know, and even now when I go out, you know, promote my book, you know, distributing my book, people come back to me, hey man, we get this knowledge, we get information from, <laughs> you know, who you with, they want to know if I'm a Muslim, I'm, I'm with the, uh, you know, what society I'm with, you know, but uh, they don't even realize, man, and knowledge that is power you know and just by doing my research I realized how powerful we are so yeah so that's the whole thing just recognition and respect you know and uh, you change your mindset yeah but the book came about you know you're trying to get this information and knowledge you know to my people you know and uh, hopefully you know we can change some some minds and perceptions you know of they of their place in this world what's the title of the book the, uh, the whole title is The Determination of a Nation Within a Nation. The subtitle is The 49th Law of Power. And I'm pretty much saying, you know, to sum it up, you know, when blacks come together, you know, they're going to realize, you know, their power and the world going to realize their power. You know, because uh, it's just so much that, you know, they don't even, you know, realize and, you know, in the, in the op opposition of the other side they they know it's better than we know ourselves so yeah so they they 10 steps ahead they planning three generations you know we plan for tomorrow plan for the week plan for the month yeah so we so far behind so but yeah so we are trying to make plays you know you're trying to get in position you know you're trying to do our part you know, trying to contribute you know and uh but yeah so they just piece of the puzzle can't we can't give it all to them because you know they can't swallow it so we just doing it piece by piece you know we're gonna be out here with the uh you know with the books you know we're gonna be trying to do do little films here and there and uh documentaries you know and uh you know, doing different things in, in, in the community so so definitely just look out we're gonna keep we're gonna keep uh expanding we're gonna keep the process going uh, building the network and pipeline all right one, one thing i realized you know not only you know do we lack uh recognition and respect throughout the world you know i, I saw you know it's, it's a void missing you know and you know i just wanted to contribute to find a way to you know to add you know to uh what I saw was missing, and that's trying to find a way to bring people together, trying to connect on some level. And I knew we had to have a change of a mindset, so I started a uh, Black Conscious movement. You know, with a Black Conscious movement, I was just trying to, you know, get folks to change the way of thinking. I had to just write a write a book to go along with that. You know, and, and what I saw, you know, not only. Is it uh, changing the mindset? We got, we still gotta, you know, find a way to connect on some level. So, 
what what I was doing with Streetlight Publishing, besides the uh, the business of publishing uh, literature, music, and film, I started sponsoring our uh, community events. And the the purpose was just to bring the community out, family, friends, uh, loved ones, just come on out, have a good time, uh, eat good, you know, and don't worry about uh, trying to raise money for nothing. Uh, trying to charge people to come on in and have a good time. We just, uh, you know, uh, a free event, a free event just to bring people out and just to have a good time. And, and so that's what you got. You got camp folk and friends, you know, and the whole purpose was just to bring the community out and uh, so they can enjoy themselves, you know, and, and uh, so we started out in, in Jasper and we're taking it to Gainesville and different locations because we realized all the communities are the same. They're all lacking, you know, what we had, you know, when we didn't have nothing, we had each other and, uh, you know, in that uh, connection. So uh, at the least, you know, we could try to bring folks out, you know, try to have that good bond. And uh, so that's what the Ken Folk and Friends is. And just on a bigger scale, you know, we are trying to uh, bring trust back within the community, you know, hard for us to trust each other. You know, uh, everything is a process. You know, nothing's gonna happen quick over time. So, you know, so what we're trying to do is show consistency. We're trying to build a structure. And um, yeah, so we're just trying to come together. So what you're gonna get, you're gonna get that power that's already within us, you know. all of, So we don't need nothing external. We don't need nobody to do anything or, or give us nothing. We got everything we need. We got to tap into that. You know, so that's the uh, the main goal and the mission. Try to tap into, you know, uh, the resources and everything that we have available, and try to use them to benefit benefit us for uh, growth and development. So uh, we're gonna just keep doing different things. Uh, we're trying to, you know, bring that trust in the community and uh, be consistent with it. You know, because you know we're lacking, and we're just gonna keep building. But the end, the end goal is growth and development. You know, we, we want to see that in our communities. We want to see our communities get stronger. And uh, we want to see uh, see respect. We want to see our people more respected, you know. Uh, so we're just going to keep doing our part, you know. And we're just going to see what results come from that, you know. So I just wanted to come back to where it all started from. It all started from uh, Jasper, Hamilton County. You know, then we moved on to Gainesville, uh, Alachua County, you know, and that's where we got the foundation before we left, went into the military, went into the Air Force, uh, went into the Army, you know, we got all the ed education you can get, you know, any more education, you're going to have to call me a doctor. So, you know, so uh, so right now my biggest thing is serving. I, you know, I don't I don't realize, you know, once you, once you reach the top, you get that self-actualization, you know, reach all you want to reach, achieve what you want to achieve. You know, you'll realize it's all about giving back. You know, so I'm, I'm big on serving, big on giving back. You know, I don't serve my country, uh, serve my church, serve my community. And now I'm on to bigger things. So now I'm looking at my people in the position where they at in life. And I know uh, we can have a better standard of living. And even though things are going backwards and going into chaos if we lock in we can tap in and we can achieve something great so i just want to be a part of whatever moving you know it's that time you know uh so i'm just looking out for anybody who want to connect who trying to make moves you know who got a vision you know it's all about uh putting forth that effort right now so you know so that's what it's, that's what it's all about you know so i look forward to seeing y'all at the top seeing y'all on the journey Everybody ain't gonna make it, you know. But you know, you you know the ones, you know who who's there for the, uh, you know, there to put the work in, you know. And but yeah, it's a beautiful thing, man. We're beautiful people, man. We've been through a lot, you know. We're still kicking, you know. But yeah, but it's greater things out there for us, man. So we're just trying to do our part. And we're looking to connect with anybody, you know, who on that same wave. It's all, it's all about energy, man. Good energy. You know, we're spiritual people. So we just got to tap into all this that we got, man. We got everything we need. So we just got to tap in, you know. But the two things I say, uh, mentally and spiritually, those are two things. Tap in, 
on the, on the mentally because uh, we've been fed, you know, we've been fed a lot of a lot of craziness and a lot of stuff been hidden from us, you know. But everything we need is available, so we just gotta tap in, you know, and uh, it's gonna work. For the Nine Law of Power, it's all about you know when we come together, you gonna see you gonna see that power manifest. You know, one thing that has not taken place, blacks coming together for their shared interests. All right. So, but when you do see that, you're going to see power. And that's why I came up with 49th Law of Power. You know, you got um, Green, he got the 48th Law of Power. You know, you got 50 Cent, got the 50th Law of Power. And I got that 49th Law. All right. So it all going to come together. Y'all just stay tuned. You know, we're going to do some great things. We out. Living life, but never fully understanding it. And I never fell in love, but still I stand in it. And if hustling was a choice, I would abandon it, but it's not. No jobs for the first time failing, so it's rocks. And by any means, we serve in fiends. And it's ironic, we must supply that demand that's basic economics. And basically, I want it. I want every dollar printed, and I know just how I'm going to spend it. I want two colors supreme candy paint and them old tinted. I want a quarter of eight that ain't complete until I win it. All the hammers boosting profit so the sky's the limit. Fiends at home plate striking out, so I got a pictures. But at what cost must I ball? And who's going to stand for me if I fall? Can't put my trust in no bra, because they didn't show up to the money did. But if I live and die for the dollar, I can't be mad at them because they wanted it. See, everybody's looking for something. Street dudes don't get 401ks. We can't retire and live off pensions. Hunger can suppress the fear of death. So we move forward with cruel intentions. It's like we got no choice. It's like continuing the family business. It's not my decision. It's my inheritance. My family moved more weight than a strong man. So the block is my own land. I become comfortable and continue. I was born on this block. I wasn't sent here. This is no coincidence here. This is my destiny. Most people don't know how to whip that work, boy, but it's my family recipe. We serve excessively. So this life is all I know. 15th Street, 5th Avenue, Arch Road. That's as far as I go. Dream, dreams and aspirations limited to only what I can do in the hood. So if these lost dudes and bros think I'm balling, then the stipulations is good. I'm hood rich now. All the bad girls see me. I got a charger with Lamborghini doors, but no Lamborghini. You see, every game has its limitations. You got to respect this. Everything I own can be physically touched, so it's kind of hard to protect it. All the money I have is in my pockets, but the Dow Jones don't affect it. See, it ain't a care in the world for those that don't care in the world, and my conscience is clear. I'm pumping poison into my own people until we disappear. Because once the people forget who they were, they can't know who they are. The walking no ones, children's college tuition spent on rims for our car. But we flat on the people looking at us like we a sideshow. What we need to buy a house for when we're on the corner more than light poles. We got ropes around our necks again and all they had to do was ice those. Couple that with some nice clothes and we think we winning. And if man is, is created in God's image, then why is there so much sinning? Trapped in these city, bucking probation, skipping town to Georgia so I can see this girl. Yeah, I can sneak from state to state, but I can never see the world. Can't see my native land or speak my native tongue or breathe my native air. I'm in the projects pushing crumbs. Little bits and pieces of destruction. The fiends breathing in their lungs. Cooked with love by the community's favorite son. And we all satisfied. Because happiness doesn't exist outside what we can see. And we never open our eyes. And when we hide, our eyes are on the air closed. When people say we animals, say this is the path chose. I say you don't have to smell like right shh to be considered whole. Nah. <laughs> but who knows? Are we just ordinary people? Nah. I think not. <laughs>